Hello, this is Angelia, and you are listening to or watching the podcast, Why You Do What You Do. Uh, the podcast that talks about human development and psychology to maybe help you figure out a little bit more about why you do what you do. Um, and last time we were talking about uh, measuring cognitive abilities in middle age. You know, there are those of us who are at that stage of their life and, uh, you know, might be noticing some, some changes. Um, and so we're going to pick up on that. Um, despite wide individual differences, most participants in the Seattle study show no significant reduction in most abilities until after age 60. So most of us were keeping, keeping our marbles till we hit about the age when they start falling out our ears, I guess. <laughs> and then not in all or even most areas. So if you're worried about it, you're just going to lose your mind when you hit 60. Don't worry about it. It's not going to happen like that unless you have a serious, you know, mental illness. Virtually no one declined on all fronts. So, you know, nobody totally lost everything all at once. And many people improved in some areas. So again, when it talks about, you know, uh, professional uh, work and, you know, knowledge, um, the more versed you are in a thing, the more able you're to recall it. Um, and build on it um, and have, you know, um, more skill than someone younger who doesn't know as much as you. Consistent with previous research, successive generations score progressively higher at the same ages on reasoning, spatial orientation, and verbal abilities. Don't you love it when pop-ups just do that to you, telling you things that you already know? Um, but, uh, you know, um, remember they had a bunch of these people and they had the older people and the, the younger people they added in, um, so they're saying that the, you know, um, there was no real difference between one generation and the other. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, and the older folks scored progressively higher, um, um, on, uh, reasoning uh, and spatial orientation and verbal abilities. So the older we get, the more proficient we become um, at basically noticing what's going on around us and, you know, conversing. Um, it's called experience and older folks have it. Sorry, younger folks. <laughs> You'll get it too as you get older. <laughs> However, among baby boomers currently in middle age, Vocabulary showed less improvement than in previous cohorts. Uh-oh. Um, and numerical ability declined. These cohort trends suggest that U.S. society may be approaching a limit on improvements in basic cognitive abilities attributable to education and healthy lifestyles. So, here in the U.S., a lot of people say our educational system's broken, but uh, because of our educational system, we're kind of plateaued out, you know? Um, and people are against the vouchers for private schools and things like that, and people say, I can't homeschool my kid, I can't, you know, be without the income. But this leaves us with a generation of folks who can only get so far in school, because this is as far as the teacher can get, because she's got 25, 30 other kids in the room, and, you know, they all have to be brought up together, not like a Montessori, uh, where this kid could be at this level, this kid could be, you know. Um, so, it does hold our folks back, um, and healthier lifestyles, because, let's face it, America's got the fattest folks going, we eat crap, you know. We like crap. It tastes good. Our brain wants it and enjoys it, and we do it. So, <laughs> we are not the model uh, folks of the world like we used to be. You know, there are going to be people who disagree with that, but, you know, science book. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, if we could come up with more Montessori schools where people are allowed to progress at their own level, and now I understand, there are, public schools are behavioral issues, um, you know, uh, I, I was a room mother, and, you know, I was on the SBDM committees, 
in my son's elementary. So I understand the, the problems here. But if we could do that, it would be more helpful. And that way we could have people who want to rise and can rise to do that and not be held down by the other folks in the class. Um, and that's a shame to say, but, you know, it is a fact. I have seen it with my own two eyes. Um, and again, if we ate healthier, our brains would probably be smarter <laughs> than if we keep filling it full of fat and, you know, sugar. So that's just a fact there. Another line of research has distinguished between two aspects of intelligence. They are fluid and crystallized. Fluid intelligence is the ability to solve novel problems that require little or no previous knowledge, such as discovering the pattern in a sequence of figures. It involves perceiving relations, forming concepts, and drawing inferences. And some people are not good at this. Um, my husband has a problem. Um, he uh, has a mental illness and he also has um, some mental disabilities um, due to a stroke. So he has problems with inferences now. Um, like he'll watch a movie and something will be inferred. He doesn't get it. I have to explain. Well, they didn't show that or didn't explain it, but it's inferred that that happened. Well, I didn't see it happen. They didn't tell me it happened. How am I supposed to know? Um, so, you know, with the changes in his brain... Um, he now has lost the ability to infer things. So that's a problem, you know. Um, so his fluid intelligence has decreased uh, since the brain damage due to his stroke. These abilities, which are largely determined by neurological status, tend to decline with age. So yeah, we're all going to lose a little. Crystallized intelligence is the ability to remember and use information acquired over a lifetime. For example, in finding a synonym for a word. Um, I do that a lot because I have to. <laughs> because since my stroke, um, the brain and mouth don't really work together. It affected the speech center in my brain. So they don't work together like they used to. I used to be a lot quicker. So a lot of times I can't come up with a word. So my brain then is in there looking for synonyms and and I come out with something that's close to what I want to say, but not always what I want to say. And that's frustrating. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It is measured by tests of vocabulary, general information, and responses to social situations and dilemmas. Now, I'm pretty good at those things. There are some people who are not good at those things. Um, and... Huh. I just do do my best to have patience with folks. But sometimes, you know, uh, when somebody's having a meltdown or a freak out, and you're just like, what? Oh my goodness. It's not all that. Calm down. You know? Uh, but some people are just like a rocket. And you're like, why? All, all you're doing is freaking yourself out. Because I'm sitting back like, really? Okay. <laughs> So you, you're not hurting me, <laughs> you're, you're hurting yourself, you know. But some people, they, they have problems with uh, responding to social situations and dilemmas. You know, it's just not on their, not on their um, <laughs> uh, proficiency list, to put it nicely. Um, these abilities, which depend largely on education and cultural experience, hold their own or even improve with age. So again, um, your crystallized intelligence is going to improve with age um, if your memory works. Um, and your fluid intelligence is going to go down with age. So, yeah, no. Typically, fluid intelligence has been found to peak during young adulthood. Whereas crystallized intelligence improves through middle age and often until near the end of life. Because not everyone loses their memory and gets, you know, dementia and things like that. My father is um, 83 years old. Nine times out of ten, he's sharp as a tack. He can tell you uh, what, when, how, where, and why. Um, but now, every now and then, poof, you know. Well, 
what did we do? What? I don't remember. Or what was that? You know, I don't remember. So, you know, in 83, to remember 9 to, and out of 10 things, that's still pretty freaking good. <laughs> um, however, much of the research was cross-sectional and thus may at least partly reflect generational differences rather than changes with age. Um, so, you know, a lot of people say these disgeneration differences because this is their experience and things. Um, and there is truth in that. Excuse me. But overall, um, we're born cl with close to the same brain. Now the brain does change over time. Um, and, you know, our brains are changing. So, you know, there could be, be some truth in that. Um, but in general, while you're young, you're better at fluid intelligence tasks. Um, and when you're older, you can be better at crystallized intelligence tasks. The Seattle study sequential findings were somewhat different. Although fluid abilities did decline earlier than crystallized abilities, losses in such fluid abilities as inductive reasoning and spatial orientation did not set in until the mid-60s. So for most of us, that's good news. Um, you're not going to start losing many marbles till you're in your mid-60s. Um, and in crystallized abilities, not until the 70s or 80s. Like I said, my dad's 83. Nine times out of ten, he remembers stuff. It's just that ninth time that causes him frustration. Um, and now me, I'm not sure I'm doing that good, you know, when I'm just now, you know, my late 50s, pushing 60. Uh, so, you know, Lord help me. <laughs> One fluid ability that does peak quite early, beginning in the 20s, is perceptual speed. Um, and that's the speed with which you perceive things. Um, so, you know, uh, some people are slower on the uptake than others. And that's just their nature. Middle-aged adults may make up for losses in this basic neurological ability by gains in areas affected by learning and experience. Higher order abilities necessary for independent, productive living. Um, and I'm sure we've all heard stories or know of folks who have problems with life. They just have a problem with life. You know, I've been accused of that, but that's not true. That was things that were said about me by folks who didn't really know me. Uh, they like to label people, and that's the label they stuck on me. Um, and it's like, oh, really? Because if you look at my Social Security, um, you know, uh, statement, I only missed three years. One with each of my children because I had read, you know, we found out in uh, parenting, you know, classes. Um, that it's best for the child if they're with someone who loves and trusts them and they trust for the first year of their life. So I did take a year off with each kid, you know, um, you know, and then I didn't quit working until I had to. So, you know, anyone who's said that about me, they don't know me and they're not telling the truth. They're saying what they, they want to say and labeling me. So, you know, enough about me on that, but... <laughs> There are people who have problems, for real, with living an independent life. Now, I, my husband will tell you, I'm an independent person. I enjoy it. Um, I like, I don't like depending on other folks. I do not. Uh, because, in my experience, uh, other folks will let you down. And you ain't going to get what you want out of life. You know? They'll let you down. They'll hold you down. You know? So, I, I like being in charge of me is all I'm saying. Uh, but there are people who have problems. I met a woman... Uh, she was one of my clients. She was in her 50s. She still could not manage to have a life. She was scared. Her parents bought her a home. She was scared to live there by herself. Um, she didn't want to do what was necessary to live there by herself. She didn't want to work and make money. Um, they had gotten her disability. Um, but somehow she had lost the disability. So... You know, I don't know how that happens, but evidently maybe um, she got better or they thought she was. And so they tested her and decided, well, you don't need it anymore. But anyway, this poor woman, she could not have a life. Um, and her parents were in their 80s and her father was talking to me and he was just like, you know, what are we going to do? Is she going to be able to overcome this? Um, what are we going to do? You know, I'm in my 80s. You know, uh, well, what are we supposed to do about this? 
Um, and I said, it's going to be up to her. It's going to be up to her. She has things to overcome. And it's going to be over, you know, up to her whether she wants to do the work necessary or not. Um, and last I spoke with her, she was doing better. But she was still wanting to lean. And she was starting to lean on me. Um, and I, I was not that kind of life coach. You know, the kind that Penn and Teller say is bad. <laughs> but, you know, you, you're not going to pay me to make decisions for you. I'm not going to do that. That's not my job as a life coach. My job is to teach you how to have a life. Um, so, you might not like what I have to say. I, I, sometimes I got to deal out some tough love to some folks. But, you know, um, there are folks who have problems with the higher order abilities in order to live an independent, productive life. Um, now, we're going through some things with one of my sons. Um, we were counseled when he was younger to become guardians and make him live the life that they felt was right for him. And we didn't want to do that to him. So we didn't do that to him. Um, but now this past year, there have been four incidences where we're like, he just can't do it. He can't do it. He can't maintain, you know, a space in a clean manner. Um, he cannot manage his finances responsibly. So we're at a point now where we're like, hey dude, um, you need to show us that you can live by yourself. You're talking about how you want to do it, but what you're showing us is that you can't do it. You need to change the behaviors or we're going to start making decisions for you and I know that's not what you want. So sometimes you got to step in on folks with problems um, and give them some tough love. Improvements in these crystallized abilities may be related to career development and the exercise of family responsibility. Um, I know women who have had children and basically dropped those children off at uh, their parents' house and boogied. Um, they have no desire for family. Um, and I think that's really sad for those kids because those kids are going to understand they weren't wanted. Um, and I know what that feels like. So, um, that's going to be hard on them for the rest of their life. So, you know, um, if we can help people with these problems, um, then everyone will have a better outcome. Uh, so, you know, uh, sometimes, um, you got to get people into some career training, you know, if they just dropped out or just left high school, had no idea what they wanted to do. Um, like I said, a little bit of that um, with the charity, but um, the best thing, the best grades you got in school are what you were best at because it was easier for you. That's why you got the good grades. And that's probably going to be the direction you're going to want to go in if you have no idea which direction you want to go in. Um, so, you know, you can always stop, you know, because even big trains get derailed so needless to say your little life train might get derailed um so you need to be able to get it back on the track and that's a good way to find which track you want to go on you know like at the at this station with the roundabout and there's like a bunch of different tracks that the train can go on um but like i said if you don't know where you want to go uh stop and take a look at what you were best at because what you're good at um is something that comes easy to you and it's something you're going to enjoy and like so excuse me that is a direction you can put yourself in um if you don't have any direction in life um and again people don't like when i talk about birth control and things but it is better to not have unwanted children than to let the child know it was not wanted because that's going to follow them for the rest of their life you know that's that's just my my statement on that and um some people are not going to like it but you know that's just how i feel <laughs> is you should use birth control if you're not ready and willing to be a parent if that responsibility is too much for you and you know whether it is or not then don't do it you know i mean better yet you know, don't do what it takes to make a baby because everybody knows what it takes to make a baby and if you do what it takes to make a baby, then that baby should be your responsibility. But that's not how 
the world works, unfortunately. So, you know. Advances in verbal memory during middle age are especially notable since memory loss is a major worry of many people at midlife. So, see, um, we have advances in uh, the, the memory um, in verbal uh, abilities in middle age. So, you know, don't worry <laughs> that, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get middle age and I'm just going to fall to pieces. Because that's not going to happen unless you let it happen. You know, if you believe it and you let it happen, then it's going to happen, of course. Given the strong performance of most middle age in this area, objective evidence is substantial. Uh, memory deficits in persons younger than 60 may indicate a neurological problem. Um, like I said, uh, my husband does have a neurological problem. He's got some brain damage due to a stroke. Um, and so he's lost some of his, you know, memory. Uh, he can't remember anything and we prompt him and he gets mad sometimes when we prompt him. He's like, I told you I don't remember. I was like, well, but sometimes if we prompt you two or three times you will remember. He goes, well, I know, but it irritates me. It's like, well, you know, <laughs> sorry that your brain is the way it is. We're just trying to help. Um, you know, and like I said, the inference thing. He's lost. He's lost that. <clears throat> if he's watching a movie and this, you know, was happening and then it went dark and then suddenly <coughs> something else is happening. Wait! They just showed them doing this. Now they're doing this. How did that happen? They didn't... It's inferred, baby. <laughs> <coughs> but he's like, I don't like that. That, that. that freaks me out. I don't understand that. So, you know. It's a problem. It's going to take some getting used to. <laughs> <coughs> the distinctiveness of adult cognition. Because there is a difference between the way adults think and the way children think. We should all know that. <laughs> Instead of measuring the same cognitive abilities at different ages, some developmental scientists find distinctive qualities in the thinking of mature adults. Because there are. There are distinctive qualities that differ from, you know, uh, people of other ages. Some, working within the psychometric tradition, claim that accumulated knowledge changes the way fluid intelligence operates. Now, there's something to that because the way you learn and the more you learn um, and the more you retain um, affects future learning. Others maintain that mature thought represents a new stage of cognitive development, a special form of intelligence. Um, and nah, I don't necessarily subscribe to that. Um, like I said, in life, you're building all constantly. You're building your life. Um, and what you learned and uh, remember from the past is groundwork for you to keep building on. So, you know, that's the way I look at it. Nothing just springs to life on its own. <laughs> Which may underlie mature interpersonal skills and contribute to practical problem solving. Um, and, you know, mature interpersonal skills is important um, when you're out in the world, especially if you want to be in any professional capacity. You, you know, have to have mature interpersonal skills because I have seen folks out in the professional world who do not. <laughs> and if you start turning red in the face and throwing fits and screaming at folks, chances are, after a while, you're no longer going to be in a position of leadership in a professional place. That's just a fact because nobody wants to deal with that. You know? We want to talk with people we can talk with. If we have differences, we want to be able to figure out where's the common ground, how can we work together. Um, you know, that's that's mature interpersonal skills. Um, and, you know, if you're working on a more immature <laughs> interpersonal uh, level, um, other folks are just going to be turned off by that. You know, it's like, oh my god. You know, they remind me of uh, somebody in elementary or middle school. Look at them throwing a fit. That's disgusting. You know, how can they still be like this at their age? Um, and that's just what other people think. And um, practical problem solving. Like I said, everything you've been through, every problem you had to solve, has helped you to learn how to solve other problems. Um, and that's the problem with 
being, you know, too um, permissive with your children, if they never have any problems to solve, if you take care of everything for them, uh, they don't know how to do that, you know? Uh, so even if you, uh, like I said, when I let my kids figure stuff out, I gave them suggestions and stuff, but now when it came with other adults, that's where I would step in because another adult should not be coming at my child and causing my child problems. Um, and even though I would tell them from now on, you just say, you know, call my mom. <laughs> you know, because an adult should not be coming down on your child uh, and causing them problems. Um, like I said, uh, my son's schools learned about Miss Coleman. Um, I was okay with whatever was going on in your classroom, whatever you how you wanted to teach. I was fine with that. Um, I was fine, you know, uh, if they did something wrong and you wanted to give them sentences or whatever. But when you started laying hands on my kids, or uh, for my kids who had uh, noted, you know, mental disabilities, um, and they had ECE teachers and they had an IEP, an individual education plan, that was made by, you know, these exceptional child education folks, said, he needs this, he needs this, he needs this. Um, and this is what we're going to do when he has test work. And there were teachers and uh, educators who would violate the IEP um, saying, oh, I don't have time, you know. Oh, I don't care if you don't have time. It says this right here. This is the law, the federal law, okay? Uh, <laughs> you're not going to violate my son's rights. So, you know, sometimes you got to step in. But if it's a problem between them and another child, or them in a way things are done. Or you need to say, well, how do you think we can help you? You know, how do you think um, you need to deal with this? What do you think the best thing to do would be? And you need to make them think for themselves and do some problem solving for themselves because if you take care of all the problems for them, they have no idea how to do it for themselves. <laughs> so that's not good for them. The role of expertise. Two young resident physicians in a hospital radiology laboratory examined a chest x-ray. They studied an unusual white blotch on the left side. Looks like a large tumor, one of them says finally. The other nods. Just then, a longtime staff radiologist walks by and looks over their shoulders at the x-ray. That patient has a collapsed lung and needs immediate surgery, he declares. Why do mature adults show increasing competence in solving problems in their chosen fields? And it's the easy answer is because they learn more and they draw from their experience. Uh, one answer seems to lie in specialized knowledge or expertise, a form of crystallized intelligence. Um, you know, uh, like the little commercials, they got the more you know, <laughs> you know. Advances in expertise continue at least through middle adulthood and are relatively independent or general of the of general intelligence and of any declines in the brain's information process machinery um so it's going to continue through middle adulthood so don't worry that your brain is just going to fall apart <laughs> it's not there's going to be some slow decline that happens to all of us but you know um Nobody needs to get fear getting old and losing all your marbles. <laughs> it's not going to work like that. With experience, it has been suggested information processing and fluid abilities become encapsulated or dedicated to specific kinds of knowledge, making that knowledge easier to access, add to, and use. So like I said, um, it's, it's a foundation you can build on. If, you already know stuff, then when you learn more things, um, you can build on that. Um, and then that, that's how you become an expert in your field. Um, so, you know, you're going to know more at that stage of your life than someone who's just starting out. You know, like a doctor who's been a doctor for, you know, 40 years um, is going to know more than the intern who just came through the door, even though they just came out of college and have the, you know, most modern knowledge. They don't have the experience that this doctor who's been doing this for 40 years has. So that's why they make mistakes and that's why they have, you know, the, the teaching hospitals and things like that. 
Um, and God help you if you're a Medicaid patient and you have to go to one of those because I've had some bad experiences uh, until an older, more experienced doctor would weigh in and say, hey, you know, um, but, um, yeah, no. Uh, the older folks do know a little bit more. They have a little bit more experience. Sorry, younger, younger folks, I know that's not what you want to hear. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you have the most recent knowledge, but they also have experience. And it would be great if the generations could team up and work on that. It's like, well, here's what I learned. And they're like, well, here's what I know. And then you can, you know, work together to come up with the best solution for things. I mean, that would be the great one instead of everybody worrying about, you know, millennials hating the boomers and Gen X not liking Gen Y and, you know, huh. <laughs> can't we all just get along, <laughs> you know? In other words, encapsulation captures fluid abilities for expert problem solving. Thus, although middle-aged people may take somewhat longer than younger people to process new information, and trust me, uh, we do, uh, in solving problems in their own fields, they more than compensate with judgment developed from experience. Um, and them have said that, um, sometimes you gotta watch that, because sometimes your experiences can color your situation. You know, not everything is the same thing all the time. Um, so sometimes if you're making judgments about things, um, you could be wrong because you're falling back on this when now you have this and it's not the same as that, um, but you're judging it as being the same. So, you know, and, and in that, especially I'm talking about people. Uh, so sometimes you gotta watch out, um, you know, for uh, thinking you know based on your experience and you may not know <laughs> so <laughs> that's where I'm gonna leave you today I hope this helped you figure out maybe a little bit more about why you do what you do uh, thanks for watching um, please like and share this educational program so we can spread it around the world um, if you want to help me out subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to help me out even more go to my patreon page and become a patron that's all for now until next time